Hello and welcome to the Enriched Community of Practice first Zoom call. I'm Ann Buckhaus from the Posi Supercomputing Center and I'll be introducing today's uh, webinar. As context, Enrich Community of Practice is a community of practice of educators, teachers, and trainers um, in technical areas such as research, e-research, and computation. It's a place where we can gather and chat as educational professionals and practitioners to share challenges, ideas, and information. It's open to all and everyone is invited to join. The topic of our first Zoom call came out of a suggestion at the ARDC Skills Summit a few weeks ago. And the webinar will focus on using data, metrics, to show training value. Kim Gerwitz from Elixir will be looking at this topic in two contexts. The higher level context is one of sharing impact or value of training to your institution or business. And in the second context or the lower level context, Kim looks at the value or evaluation of particular courses or trainings. We're lucky to have Kim with us today um, from Elixir. Elixir is an intergovernmental organization that brings together life sciences from across Europe, including bringing together life sciences training across Europe. Kim holds the role of training impact coordinator for Elixir. She's joining us today from um, the University of Cambridge in England. Welcome, Kim. Hi, Anne. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much. Um, thank you uh, for, for, the, for the invitation to present today um, and, and for that kind introduction. Um, would you like me to begin sharing my slides now? Yep, that sounds good. We'll, Thanks, Kim. We'll, we'll jump straight into it. Okay, great. Yes, yeah, so, um, so today I would like to share with you all um, Elixir's strategy for assessing uh, the quality and impact of training, um, as well as an interface that we developed, an, an online interface, um, which we call the Training Metrics Database which um, streamlines the way in which we collect and store this data as well as re re report on it. Um, so Anne did mention a bit about Elixir, but, but just to give a little bit more context. So uh, this is a, a, a pan-European research infrastructure um, comprising 22 member states across Europe. And um, it's structured around five platforms of which training is, is one, um, and is uh, we see as very um, important uh, to the capacity building effort of this um, collaborative uh, initiative across across Europe. The um, training platform in particular aims to establish and implement best practices in bioinformatics training. Um, and for this, we're developing a, a toolkit, which we hope will, will be um, available soon. We um, hope to support training providers across Europe, and we do this by focusing on delivering training at three levels, so for developers, researchers, as well as trainers. Um, and lastly, we aim to build a sustainable training infrastructure across Europe. Um, I've included a few icons of some of the organizations and groups that we c collaborate with, um, and we really try and do link up as, as much as possible with what's happening elsewhere. In terms of the objectives for training quality and impact in particular, we, we focus around, um, I guess, three main areas. So it's to assess the um, audience demographic being reached by our training events. In the short term, we look at um, determining the, the, the quality or assessing the quality of these events. So this would be directly after training. And then, um, and then we look at impact in, in the longer term. So six months to a year after training, contacting participants again and um, looking at how things might have uh, impacted their, their careers. And um, all of this information is collected to uh, firstly Im improve training quality, um, but also to feed into best practice for Elixir, but as well as um, the, widening, the, the wider training community. Um, so in, in order to, to achieve these aims, we, we collect metrics um, 
various sets of, of training metrics. The first set being um, metrics about the events themselves. So these are things like the number of participants that attended, how the course was, um, was funded, um, who, what, other, what other structures were involved, et cetera. Um, demographic metrics, things like what is the career stage of the participants, so gender, what is their country of employment, and then um, quality metrics. So these are things like um, how would they rate their satisfaction with the course? Would they recommend the course to, other, to others, et cetera? And then lastly, the impact metrics. Examples of these would be, um, do you feel you're, you're able to explain to others what you learned in the training? Um, would, you, uh, would, you, would you still recommend it even after all this time that has passed? Uh, maybe did the training lead to or facilitate a publication or submission of a dissertation or some kind of collaboration, et cetera? Um, so those are the types of things that, that we look at. And um, in, in, in developing the strategy for uh, what metrics we'd like to collect, as well as the way in which that, that information is collected, we've worked very closely with the um, Elixir Training Coordinators Group. So I mentioned that Elixir comprises 22 member states. Each state has a, a coordinator of training. Um, and this group, I guess, forms a, a really great community and sounding board to, to develop this information. So perhaps parallels could be drawn um, in the context of the Enrich COP in terms of coordinating across centers. Um, I'd also like to mention that our, uh, the, the strategy as well as the metrics have been approved and endorsed by our Elixir Head of Nodes Committee, um, which is um, an important structure who uh, feed into developing and, and agreeing on the, the uh, technical and um, research uh, strategy for Elixir as a whole. Um, and then lastly, just to give a sense of scale, this, this strategy has been adopted by 19 of the, of the Elixir nodes. So we have, and then, and then perhaps just, just to mention that each node might then comprise tens of, of um, institutions you know, within, within each country. So it is quite a large uh, collaborative effort. And then for the context of, of this particular group who might be interested in implementing something similar, um, I've, I've just included a, quite a lot more detail. So it's, it's quite a text heavy slide, but hopefully something to refer back to um, should you want to in the future. Uh, so to mention, we, we use uh, feedback surveys quite, quite heavily. Um, that's our, our method for collecting these metrics um, directly after training has happened. That's when we send out the survey about um, the, how did you find the, the quality of the course, so all of those metrics. And um, we, it took a lot of time to define these questions as well as the associated answer scales. Um, and that was to facilitate uh, d d data analysis. Um, it's obviously much, much easier than uh, mining free text. While free text is really rich and we do recommend, you know, including a, a comment box for all the questions, by having defined answer options as well, it really helps one to, to bin those answers and um, make comparisons across courses. And that speaks to um, the third point, which is all about consolidating this data collection. Um, and this could be at many different levels. So whether it's across a, a consortium such as Elixir, perhaps it's even different courses uh, within a single training program, or even for multiple occurrences of, of the same training event. By um, having very specific metrics and associated answer scales, um, one can you know, compare across those courses, perhaps see how things have improved or changed. Um, so we, we found that a, a really important aspect. Um, in addition, collecting the event data was very important. So these were things like, um, I mentioned earlier, the funding source, in addition, you know, the start and end date of the course. And this helps to contextualize findings. So you could essentially pull out um, a subset of the data, maybe you're interested in a particular time frame, or maybe you're interested in onla online courses in particular. So by having these training event tags, um, one, one is able to do that. I'd also just mention a few, I guess, tips, things that we found very useful um, in order to get people to fill in the forms, it, um, perhaps useful to allow time at the end of the training event itself for participants to fill in the survey. Um, 
you know, if you, you tell them to do it afterwards, perhaps they'll, they'll forget, but allocating 15 minutes at the end of the time um, really does seem to increase the um, response rate. And um, in addition, it's important to allow for um, provision of collecting of this longer term feedback or what we call um, impact assessment in, in, in the project planning stage. So I guess it's, it's, if, if, um, it's very easy to send out a survey at, an, at the end of a training event. People have just attended, so you know, perhaps they're likely to answer. But contacting people again six, six to 12 months down the line um, you know, things think, um, people forget and maybe, um, maybe they haven't even given consent to be contacted. So it's, it's important when, when setting up the, um, your quality and impact assessment strategy to think about that long term right from the beginning. How are you going to contact people again? Do you need to consider anything in terms of data protection? So um, in, in Europe, we're very concerned about the GDPR or General Data Protection Regulation, which stipulates that, you know, you can only contact people if they've given you explicit permission, etc. That might be something relevant um, to, to your context. Um, so just to put it in uh, a bit of um, perspective, maybe giving a case study. I'd like to speak about the Elixir training program and, and some of the metrics that we've captured for, for Elixir. So, um, and I think, I, th I think showing the sense of scale also provides a bit of rationale for why we decided to create an online interface to help us collect all this information. Um, as you can see, it's quite, uh, um, the initiative was quite large between September 2015 and March 2019 we had um, over 850 training events that were recorded, over 19,000 people trained, over 2,000 days of training. Um, of those 800 events, we collected feedback data for about 400 of them. And as, as I mentioned, 19 of the Elixir nodes were involved in this, in this effort. Um, the reason why we can report on these numbers is, is because of our insistence of collecting those event metrics for, for each event. So um, perhaps that's, uh, it's, it's um, a, an, an incentive to um, c collect that type of information because when pulled together, it really um, is quite impressive. You know, you might just be collecting it one by one for each event um, and things are, are all over the place. But when you compile that and consolidate all the information, um, I think that the numbers really do speak for themselves. So that brings me to this training metrics database that I mentioned. So for the, for the training coordinators, it's all about streamlining the collection, storage, visualize, visualization, and, and reporting of our training quality and impact data. And then for, for stakeholders, or you know, perhaps for anyone who's interested in, in viewing what we've done, um, it allows individuals to view and um, generate dynamic reports of our training data and have a look. So at the bottom of this slide, I have included the URL to the training metrics database. And you are welcome to visit that site. It's, it's open access and you, you can have a look at the, the type of things we collect um, and, and view some reports. Um, I'll just show a few, a few of those slides now um, as, as a demo. So some screenshots from the website. When you land on, on the home page, you see a dashboard which shows um, summary statistics of the, um, of the initiative overall. Uh, these slides are uh, perhaps a, a month or two old, so I think the numbers are, are a bit um, a bit larger than what's than what's shown, um, and I think that that's important to to to, to say because the um, the training coordinators have really been very central in um, shaping this initiative and and um, keeping them engaged has been really important. So the only reason the numbers go up is because the training coordinators are using the database to upload their, their information. So any type of coordinated initiative like this, I think really needs the buy-in of, of all the, 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 the partners. And if they can be involved in um, developing how, how that looks, um, I think that it, it definitely strengthens the, the longevity of, of the initiative. So on this dashboard, there's also um, an interactive map uh, which shows the distribution of, of training events, Elixir training events across 
across Europe and actually across the world. And one can zoom in. Um, again, I invite you to go have a look and see. One can click on um, specific training events and uh, have a look at information about those events in particular. But if one is interested in, in just all the Alexia events, maybe kind of seeing an overview, one can go to this All Alexia events page on the left hand search bar. And that page looks like this. It's essentially a table that lists all the Alexia events, uh, training events that are in the database. And one can apply um, various filters to have a look. Maybe one is interested in a particular funding stream or event type, um, et cetera. And, and those um, lists of events can actually be uh, exported, which might be of, of interest to perhaps a Elixir uh, heads of nodes, for, for example. Um, so that's, that's a view of, of the training events, but one can also view re reports on, um, on some of these statistics. Uh, an example being the events report. So this, this would be all, all the information shown in the table, but just um, re represented graphically. And again, one can subset the information using the filters at the top of the page. That's just showing some of those graphs that we can generate. Perhaps you're interested in looking at the training quality. Again, um, interactive reports can, can be generated showing those, those results. Um, within this database, we have also included um, a list of all the metrics that we capture, as well as the defined answer options. Um, and this might be a good resource for some of the members of this group that would like to see the, the details of what we collected. So if you go to the, um, the help tab on the database and um, follow the references link, you'll, you'll come to this page that shows all the references. Um, and you can get a better idea of, of exactly what, what we captured. Um, I'd also like to make mention of training in terms of the wider socioeconomic impact. Um, what, what we focused on in Elixir up until now has been very much about um, uh, I guess the um, participant view of how the training has impacted them, um, how they found the quality, et cetera. But I think it also, uh, training is also important to consider in terms of the socioeconomic impact and um, how this relates to financial investments. So Alexia training has been involved in an, in an initiative called RI Paths, um, which is a research infrastructure impact assessment pathway um, they're aimed at developing a framework to describe the socioeconomic impact of, of research infrastructures. There are various strands here, you know, economic, um, social, political, and, and then human resources, which I think training falls, um, falls, falls within. So we're, we're collaborating with this RI Paths initiative to try and inform um, how we determine the socioeconomic impact of, of training. Um, with that, I would just like to thank those that have been involved in this initiative. Again, it's very much been a, a community effort and there are some of the, the faces that have contributed. And lastly, um, thank you all for, for your attention and I'd be happy to answer um, any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. And we do have a few questions. Um, I might just uh, not pop up my final slide yet, as you may want to demonstrate a few things. Um, so are there any publications on the training metrics database or publications using these statistics to demonstrate the value of Elixir training? So we um, have just put together a draft, which we hope to submit within the next few weeks. Um, so hopefully there will be a publication in the works um, Im imminently. <laughs> and um, I can for sure share that with, with Anne and, 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 and this network. That's great. That was a good- uh, Hopefully when it is published. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good advert for the upcoming publication. 
uh, and a, as well a thanks from that participant as well. The second question, uh, your infographic indicated that you collect feedback from about half of the training events. Can you please tell how you decide which events you want to follow up? Is there a minimum length or, um, for example, would you seek feedback from participants of a three hour workshop, et cetera? Yeah. So that's, that's a, a very good question. And I think speaks to um, the fact that this initiative developed alongside training programs that were already taking place, right? So we have all these statistics about, about events, but maybe um, feedback w was not um, systematically collected for, for, for those events. So part of this initiative was getting people to, almost getting them in, in, in the habit of collecting this information. So the fact that roughly half um, only has feedback, that's because perhaps for the, for the first year or two, um, the way in which the data was collected was not as, as rigorous, um, you know, so it, I guess, shows that to that progression. Um, we do kind of think about which events to follow up with. Um, I, I presume by following up, um, this person is speaking about the um, impact assessment component. So that would be contacting people in, in the longer term. Um, so we do try and follow up with courses that are quite narrow in terms of um, their objectives, um, relatively shorter courses, um, and that's just so that we can then link the uh, measures of impact to specific skills that they might have acquired during the course. Um, whereas if, you know, it's for, uh, p p perhaps there, there is a way to do this for, for longer courses, but in, in the context of Elixir, most of the courses we run are three to five days in length, quite focused in terms of um, the objectives or tools that are covered. Um, and, and, and we found it was important to try and link those responses to quite sp specific course, course types, because um, that helped us with, with, with the analysis. Okay. I hope that that helps. Uh, there are a couple of other questions. Um, around the training toolkit that you mentioned um, early on, where would we look for that when it becomes available? So that would um, most likely be made available through the Elixir website. Um, I think I did include it in the slides, which I'm happy to, to share with you all. I can, I can send that to, to Anne. Um, I'd have a look on the training platform page of that website. Okay. Um, I might stand corrected, but yes, no, I'm, I, I, that, that is likely where, where it will be made available. Okay. And then likewise around that platform of the dashboard, is that a homegrown platform or is that something that is a, a, an application or a package that's readily available for, for use? So it was um, developed as, as, as a bespoke uh, platform for, for us, although it was uh, developed on open source, using open source tools. So it was developed using Drupal, um, Pantheon site, I think is, is the host. Okay. Um, but yes, it was, it was, um, I, I worked very closely with a developer to develop the site um, specifically for our community. Okay. Uh, there are a couple more in the chat. Does the Australian node of Elixir, the Emble ABR, use these training metrics that you're aware of? Um, so I know that Emble is... Yes, so Emble is one of the nodes of Elixir. Um, I'm not sure whether the Australian component of, of Emble uses these. I know that Emble EBI, which is based um, in Hingston in the UK, they, we've, we've uh, collaborated very closely with them actually in leading this, uh, this project. So they most definitely do. I'm not sure about the Australian aspect of, of EMBL. Okay, that actually leads to another question. Um, and that is around, so you talked about 19 nodes and multiple institutions 
hanging off of those nodes. Um, so it, it sounds like nodes can choose to participate and or institutions within nodes can choose to participate. Yes. Um, what, what is the uptake roughly of, of all the nodes? Is it a 50% uptake? Is it a... Uh, so so you, is, is the question with, with, within a node, how many institutions? Mm. Right. Um, I, th I think it would likely depend on which of those institutions are involved in, in providing training. Uh, because oh, because okay. Elixir is, um, training is only one component. You know, we, have, uh, we develop services and tools, resources, compute infrastructure. Perhaps some of the, those institutions are more focused on those activities and don't actually provide much training. Okay. So it would, it would likely just de depend on each. Um, okay. On each and of the, of the Elixir training nodes, what kind of lead time and buy-in time, design time, development time did you have to, did it take to develop this, I guess? If, yeah. yeah. Uh, it was... So work on this project uh, project started before I joined Elixir. Um, so including those initial discussions, I'd said probably about two and a half years um, from first discussing, okay, who is collecting these metrics? What, what are we currently doing? How can we try and harmonize that across groups? Um, agreeing on a set of defined metrics, agreeing on how that data should be collected centrally and then, and then shared, you know, obviously required quite a lot of back and forth and, um, and negotiation um, and then getting individuals to, to comply and, and um, systematically c collect this information for these courses. It, it has, it has taken quite a bit of time um, to get it to the stage that everything is now, in a single database, all the data is, you know, nicely there and can be viewed in, in a single place. Um, there were probably steps along the way where, where, we, where we could show things. You know, it's, it's not that it's, it took two and a half years before there was anything to, to show for the initiative. Yeah. But in terms of getting, to, getting it to a place where, where I feel comfortable that um, everything is, is in one place, we don't have a bit of information in this random spreadsheet and then on that website and... All, all consolidated and can be viewed probably about two and a half years, I'd say. Okay. And who led that? Who led that discussion? Who pushed that, that as a priority? Um, so it was one of the key objectives of the training platform. Okay. okay. Which is um, actually why they hired me to, to coordinate that effort. Because I, I do feel that an effort like this really does need a, a champion, someone to coordinate, be, be persistent um, yeah. and um, really try and listen to what, to what the community wants and um, develop it in, in, in a way that it will be used in the long term. You know, because there's, there's no point in developing all these things and then, and then it's too difficult for people to collect or, or they don't see right. the value in it. Right. which I think is, is a really nice aspect of our database and that as soon as information is imported, one can generate reports and um, subset the data in various ways. So that's almost one's re reward for uploading the data. One can then see. Yeah, that's definitely. Things. And like you said, you've got a, a very rich, a very rich and deep and broad perspective now. Um, and there's a final uh, can we get involved in any Elixir training community if we're in Australia? Because it appears that the Emble ABR is not a node. I, I had I had thought that. I just I, I wasn't mm. I wasn't sure. I, yeah, I don't think I know that there have been some discussions um, with with some parties within Australia wanting to perhaps join Elixir as a node. Um, I could try and find some more information on that if um, somebody is, is interested. Uh, I, I don't or, recall the names of, of those people. But would yeah, they be able to join an existing community? If they're uh, in Australia? Um, I, think, I think the way Elixir works is that um, in, in order to be an official member, there actually needs to be um, 
agreement at the government level and things need to be signed by the Minister of, of Science and Technology. Or So it's, I think it's a bit more complex than, than just joining. Um, and I think that that has to do with the way in which the infrastructure is, is funded and, and who contributes various various things. There's, you know, local funding and then across across the network. So um but but I but I but I do think it is possible for groups um outside of Europe to join Elixir. And if I'm not mistaken, there have been discussions with some groups within Australia already about joining in in the future. Okay. okay. Um yeah I, I I don't recall those direct those specific contacts though to to share with the group now, but I could could have a look into that. Okay. Um, I don't have any other questions, but while I am sharing again, I will um, just wanted to thank you again. Um, and I, I have to say that I went out and I looked at your, at the, the dashboard and I did go in behind it to look at some of the questions and we've already started, we've piloted a series of questions with um, oh, wow. a couple of our training events to uh, fine tune them for, for our specific situation. And so we plan uh, at the beginning of the year to roll out a standardized set of questions before and after um, our, key, our key training events. So thank you very much for uh, providing that and we are off and, off and running. That's, that's, really, that's really great. Thank you for, for letting me know about that. <laughs> yeah. So thank you. And uh, a virtual round of applause. Thank you for your time, Kim. And thank you, Paula, for connecting us. And thank all the attendees for attending. This webinar was recorded. and we